Story Break with Miss Michelle. Hello, Miss Michelle here. Let's start with the peanut butter and jelly song. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as nicely as we can. Hello. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Hello. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Hello. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slowly as we can. Hello. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loudly as we can. Hello. Peanut butter and jelly, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quietly as we can. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. I have someone else here who would like to join us, and that is my friend, the wolf. Hello, wolf. Hello, how are you today? I am fine, and I love to be a part of story time, but I want everyone to know that I am not always a big bad wolf. Sometimes I'm friendly and I'm kind of tired of people thinking I'm always mean and, and tricky. Just wanted to tell you, let's have story time now. Well, before we get into our story, let's get ready by putting on our glasses. These are my glasses, this is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoop, close up the book. These are my glasses, this is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and I close up the book. Okay, do you have your books? Let's get ready to open them and see what we see inside. Ready? Whoop. Oh my goodness, it's a big purple dinosaur! Close up book! Let's try again. Ready? Whoop. It's a big green monster! Close. Okay, um, let's try again. Whoop. Oh no, it's a big, bad, scary wolf with big, sharp teeth. Close that book! Wait a minute. I said I was tired of being the big, bad wolf. I am not big and I'm not bad. I'm very, very nice. Well, are you just playing a trick on me? No, I really am friendly. I mean it. Please believe me. Okay, I'll think about it, Wolfie. Hmm. Little Red Riding Hood. One morning, Little Red Riding Hood asked her mother if she could go to visit her grandmother because it had been a while since they'd seen each other. That's a good idea, her mother said. So they packed a nice basket for Little Red Riding Hood to take to her grandmother. When the basket was ready, the little girl put on her red coat and kissed her mother goodbye. Now remember, go straight to Grandma's house, her mother cautioned. Don't dawdle along the way and please don't talk to strangers. The woods are dangerous. Don't worry, Mommy, said Little Red Riding Hood. I'll be careful. But when Little Red Riding Hood noticed some lovely flowers in the woods, she wanted to add some more to her bouquet for her grandmother. She picked a few and watched the butterflies flit about for a while, and then she listened to the frogs croaking, and then she picked a few more. 
Little Red Riding Hood was enjoying the warm summer day so much that she didn't notice a dark shadow approaching out of the forest behind her. Suddenly, the wolf appeared beside her. <clears throat> what are you doing out here, little girl? The wolf asked in a voice as friendly as he could muster. I'm on my way to see my grandma who lives through the forest near the brook, Little Red Riding Hood replied. Then she realized how late she was and quickly excused herself, rushing down the path toward her grandmother's house. The wolf, in the meantime, took a shortcut. The wolf, a little out of breath from running, arrived at Grandma's and knocked lightly at the door. Oh, thank goodness, dear. Come in, come in. I was worried sick that something had happened to you in the forest, said Grandma, thinking that the knock was her granddaughter. The wolf let himself in. Poor Granny did not have time to say another word before the wolf gobbled her up. The wolf let out a satisfied burp and then poked through Granny's wardrobe to find a nightgown that he liked. He added a frilly sleeping cap and for good measure dabbed some of Granny's perfume behind his pointy ears. A few minutes later, Red Riding Hood knocked on the door. The wolf jumped into the bed and pulled the covers over his nose. Who is it? He called in a cackly voice. It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, how lovely. Do come in, my dear, croaked the wolf. When Little Red Riding Hood entered the little cottage, she could scarcely recognize her grandmother. Grandmother! Your voice sounds so odd. Is something the matter? She asked. Oh, I just have a touch of a cold, squeaked the wolf, adding a cough at the end to prove the point. <coughs> but grandmother, what big ears you have, said Little Red Riding Hood as she edged closer to the bed. The better to hear you with, my dear, replied the wolf. Nervously, Little Red Riding Hood climbed up on the bed to get a closer look. But Grandmother, what big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to see you with, my dear, replied the wolf. But Grandmother, what big teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood, her voice quivering slightly. The better to eat you is, my dear, roared the wolf, and he leapt out of bed and began to chase the little girl. Little Red Riding Hood ran across the room and through the door, shouting, Help! Wolf! as loudly as she could. A woodsman, who was chopping logs nearby, heard her cry and ran towards the cottage as fast as he could. He grabbed the wolf and made him spit out poor grandmother, who was a bit frazzled by the whole experience, but still in one piece. Oh, Grandma, I was so scared, sobbed Little Red Riding Hood. I'll never speak to strangers or dawdle in the forest again. There, there, child. You've learned an important lesson. Thank goodness you shouted loud enough for the kind woodsman to hear you. The woodsman chased the wolf far and deep into the forest where he couldn't bother people any longer. And Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother had a nice lunch and a nice long chat. The end. See, if I were in that story, I would have been a nice wolf and I would have helped your little girl, Little Red Riding Hood, find her grandmother's home. I know, Wolfie, you're a nice wolf. I know that. Right, everybody? All right, it's time to say goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. Bye-bye. It's time to say goodbye. Bye. I'll see you all next time.
Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us.